Axel Tackett with Hydroforce, the electronic sales and application engineer. Today I'll talk about, um, this is part two of the series, um, programming the EC0809 controller. Part one is about creating the backbone file, uh, where we would uh, create the um, IO specifications or uh, uh, where the IOs are landed on the controller, and also the can open J1939 communications, and also setting up information for the service tool. Part two will focus more on, uh, once we have those files in codices, looking at the template code that is provided for you um, to uh, create code in codices, and also um, we'll do some online monitoring of the, uh, of the uh, program. So I'll start this conversation off by talking about codices a little bit. Who participates in the standard? So the good news here is that uh, Hydroforce is on their own in this controller as far as this type of programming language. There are companies like Rockwell Automation, Rexroth, Amron that adopted this, this form of programming. So there are good in space worldwide of people who know how to do CODIS's programming. What is this? Um, the control development system. There are different layers of, of uh, codices as far as different uh, specifications on how this is put together, and this can be read later uh, for more information. There are different languages that you can use to program in codices. Uh, the first one is called sequential function charting. The two are instructional list or structured text. Structures looks a lot like Pascal or C. Programming. A lot of uh, industrial applications have uh, programmers or control engineers that are very familiar with ladder diagramming, functional diagramming. And the one that we use is called continuous function charting. Uh, this is the one that we training classes in. This is the one we encourage people to uh, to program in. And this is the one that we can provide technical support in because we have the most familiarity with this type of programming language. There's a of help section. We talked about that a little bit when we were doing our uh, our backbone file, but there's a help section in CODASYS as well as global support through like Google. Okay, so we will minimize this. So where we had left the, the last uh, record off was we had created our backbone file. We had imported it into this CODASYS file into this template code, um, and we had uh, compiled the code. Pretty sure we build all. We had the code to make sure that everything is okay. We talked a little about these tabs down here. PSU Port Program Organization Unit. So this is where all the programs will be written. Dates. If we've got that information on J1939, we would monitor that here. Visions. You know, if you did visualizations that you want to monitor in Codasys, this would be written here. And sources tab. So. Uh, we looked at global variables, implicit globals. We had looked at I.O. to see um, how our variables are coming into the code. We had looked at um, OD1 var, so that the variables that are RAM in the service tool you are defined down here. And then we looked at the parameter values, um, the things that do retain the memory that will um, hold their memory on a power cycle. So they're here. A resources tab that you may access would be uh, the library manager to, to look at your different libraries that you've installed, or if you have to install more libraries, like uh, how the OSCAT um, section, you would uh, install them into here. Uh, sample tracing, if you're going to do some tracing inside code assist, that could be done here. Um, but good things to look at. So I'm going to minimize that. Let's go back over to POU. So what we talked about on um, on part one was the PLC PRU or PLC PRG um, function of this program. If we click on that, we'll notice that uh, there's basically three sections: HFN, so Hydroforce in, application, and Hydroforce out. If we look application under main application, we the only thing that this does is call the main um, main section. So if I can close out, 
minimize it a little bit. And we call all the individual mains. So the O200 main under input devices, the O300 main under output devices, the 400 main under display, so on and so forth, 800, 800, 900. In sections, those are going to call the individual programs inside the input devices. And once again, do you have to program it this way? Um, no, you don't. This is just the way we've chosen to set up this template that makes it most straightforward. Okay. Input section, output section, a display section, faults, J1939, so on and so forth, and a system section. Look at the system section. Look at section. This is some of the sequential function charting that I had earlier. This is information that's going to start sending uh, SPN and FMI information out of our controller using the J1939 protocol. Information in the upper header that, you know, it's to give kind of a um, an idea of how uh, this P code works and where the variables are declared. It's called System Monitor. By Chris James on September 5th, 2013. Monitors, tiers, and voltages. So, this is good if you're creating your own code to have a, um, a, a script of area to help the person who's trying to troubleshoot this code of what was going on. About the O2 main, calls O201 joystick. If I look at O2 on joystick, kind of where we, we get into the, uh, the code of, of the system. So we have um, the whole thing here. We have an input joystick. If you'll recall, that's what what that's what our O was over here. Analog input joy y axis. Okay. Analog input joystick is coming into to a scale block, which is going to take it from a 10 bit A to D number, so 0 to 10, 23, and going to spit out a voltage in millivolts, so 5,000 millivolts. We're going to do some uh, functionality here to figure out whether we're driving um, scale block or another scale block. But this is the, this is the code that uh, this is programmed in. There are indicators of, along the top here, you know, input block and output block, a box, jump command, label command, return command, comment, so on and so forth, of all the different functions we can do in here. So if we had... Um, to add this uh, this box in here, this input box, the input. If we do it to do, sorry, my keyboard works right. F2. There we go. We can see different variables that we have to play with. So this was a global variable. I know analog and joystick one. Okay. All the devices, you're going to select it on the left-hand side. All the input things on the right-hand side. So basically, um, this will become a lot more apparent when we get to the um, the online function. But basically, we're going to take the 10-bit digital value of the joystick, run to a scale block, determine whether we're trying to drive uh, valve 1 or valve 2, this block, you'll see through the, um, we're going to signal high and signal low. Right, these are all set as parameters, so they're, they're difficult to kind of understand what the values are, but like I said, they'll become more apparent once we go online. Uh, these parameter values are going to tell us whether we're driving scale block 1 or scale block 2, or I should say millivolt underscore command A or millivolt underscore command B scale block. Okay? For my POU, so we, we get that information. And we'll go to our 0301 valve one. Understand that the command A and the command B are coming from 0201 joystick. That's why it says 0201 underscore joystick dot command A dot command B. Once again, if you were keying that in, and the dot, it's hard to it's on my other screen, but you have the selection of being command A, command B. B. Oh. MV to command A or MV 
the command B. So it, it's saying tools that are available in that other POU can be brought over into this um, to this POU. CMD B. Okay. If we're driving a foul driver. Information on these can be found in the resources tab under the uh, uh, under these libraries. But the enable command says I want to make sure that I'm not in a low alarm st or status or a high alarm status. If I'm not, that little vert uh, circle there tells us that it's a not uh, signal. Comes into the end block, both this and this is true, then it's going to enable the fast valve, block, or fast valve driver block. We're going to bring command in from um, the Joyce program. Do greater than uh, things to make sure that we are actually driving one coil or the other. Supplies, you know, going into our block here. Um, coil resistance, uh, 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 input value, you know, just tells us, you know, value uh, we need to use there. And we've got our ratio. And so our current feedback that we'll be um, using to monitor this. Um, things in the system, you know, uh, system faults. Got some prayer. Um, system faults is, for, you know, we're, we're actually. Uh, go set fault stop uh, functionalities or, or fault malfunction functionalities. G9 commands, so um, all of our DM1 messages are already um, set up for us. You can transmit onto the, uh, on the, um, uh, onto the bus, we're broadcasting now, J1939 can one out broadcasting. So if we had um, mentioned earlier J1939 joystick or or interfacing into a Wackendorf display, either send or receive, even if we just to do that over J1939, the code could go here just to try the code organized. Okay. I think the next is let's go online. So do online login. Lower right hand corner, I'm running. So the processor is running. You know, I, I could stop it. Right, and running uh, gets detented. So on run. Okay. We can, different things are happening to us here as far as we've got different colors. Joystick, real quick. So I. Um, Here, look at the log input. It's a value of 540. If we word it, it tells us that it's a word. Okay, so the uh, value is 0 to 65, 535, but we know that this is a 10 bit analog digital controller. So the value of the analog input will be from um, 1020 to 0. I have a simple potentiometer that I'm using to, to vary the signal. If I come up 550, Fifteen, um, it will turn everything off. Okay, so we is that we come to the scale block, and this is kind of difficult to see, I know, but the um, value here is twenty five seventy, so two point five volts. Okay, in that I, my signal in coming to my scale block is two point five volts. No high is forty five hundred because this is set in a service tool that we haven't covered yet. We're going to cover in, in part three. Signal is. The adding of the signal center and the dead band center. So 2500 plus 150 is 2650. So this is what we're sending out our scale block. We're going to send values between 300 and 1100, which happen to be our, our, our currents that are into our coil. So 1100 to 300. We can have the one. And so um, I guess I should say, Signal right, so signal high is 4,500, so 4.5 volts to 2,650. We're going to draw this scale block from 500 to 50. From the other scale, here it is. Let's subtract the 2,350. I'm sorry. Um, going from the 2,350 to the 500, we're going to drive scale block B. So we can see that if I vary the potentiometer. I, so my voltage is high driving coil. If 
I go the other way, I'll be. You may be able to hear that in the background, but my coil is actually um, just placements. Something I have to be aware of out of the scale block, you know, is a real value. So to get back into a word value, I've got to run these uh, conversion blocks, real to word, and then do a scale or a select block depending on whether I'm driving high or low, so driving coil A or coil B. Okay? If we do valve coil 1, or so if I turn on coil A, I start, you know, driving 300 milliamps out of a to 1100. Well, okay. We go this way. See the high So I've I've got something that's uh, set up incorrectly in my service tool. I think. I have an incorrect in the uh, set up in the service tool, so I went and fixed that and back now. So what I want to demonstrate here is driving to A will drive from our 300, I'll go right down again, our current feedback here, which is um, this lower pin. It's going from 300 up to 1100. A PWM ratio, so don't don't worry about that. That that's talk about the whole capacity of the output. So, or 300 to 1100, and going down to this this one, to 1100 also. Okay. Up to 1100. Um. That is the, the functionality that I want to do in part two, looking at, at um, this uh, as far as the backbone file in, study how the input and output files work, study how to get the POUs um, active as far as being called in the main, and also the main calling all these individual mains. Those are the things that I have. So back or part one was creating a backbone file. Create part two was looking at the codices file. Part three will be creating the service tool. My name is Michael Tackett with Hydroforce. I am the electronic sales and application engineer. Have a good day.